Welcome to Layreddit. Please take a couple of seconds to subscribe to the channel. New videos are posted every day and I need friends. People of Reddit, what is a good psychological trick that you use with success most of the times? Tell someone if I can make your hand flip over without touching it, will you buy me? Insert whatever then ask them to put their hand out and when they do, say no the other way. My friend did this to me the other day I lost 10 bucks cousins. That's so awful. I can't imagine how upset you must be. Fastest meter in the west. Not upset, just kinda like. I can't believe I fell for such a stupid trick it's all fun and games though and it was a fair bet to Lumeo. Whoa, yeah that happened to me the other day it was horrible. I get how you feel. None of these little tricks are working on my girlfriend. She must be have big brain energy. Or read it. In an argument find something to agree on then push your main point. I have had great success using this method and it always works. Absolutely. My father was a top level diplomat. Ambassador to the UN Security Council. Where of course the name of the game is to debate very contentious issues amicably. He very much followed your approach of looking for points of agreement before pushing the harder issues. One thing he was very skilled at is debating in a way that avoided triggering the other person's ego too much. Basically, the polar opposite of most internet debates where people instantly trigger the ego defenses of the other by mocking, calling their points stupid etc. My dad's theory was why on earth would you create more obstacles and resistance to your point of view by unnecessarily triggering the ego fight fuck you reflex in the other. Because I don't just want them to agree with me, I want them to acknowledge my superiority. I'd like to agree that you are superior, and now push my main point. And that point, of course, is that your mother's a whore. This really works. Also, be ready to let your point go if they provide good evidence. Pride is worthless, and it's confusing for people so used to screaming matches to suddenly be given a win. Also, stay calm. Emotions have no place in any argument of logic, and emotional arguments aren't worth getting into. You're very unlikely to unseat their opinion. Girl I work with will be arguing with me then after I agree she will flip to my original opinion and argue back lol she's fun to talk with. A. Only if you aren't touching on stuff with really strong emotions. I've tried this, and had people tell me that I'm not allowed to have opinions on Japanese war crimes in the Philippines because I don't have Asian heritage. Followed by door slamming. Face with tears of joy. There's a very famous photo of a Japanese officer about to behead an American. British or Australian prisoner. I can't remember the nationality of the detainee. Japanese war crimes in the Pacific covered more than one ethnicity. Sure but the idea that you can't have opinions on something because you weren't affected by it is dumb. I'm a Filipino, in the Philippines, whose recorded line dates back 6 generations. 18th century. You have my permission. <laughs> Reflective listening. Simply being there with someone and reflecting their words and sentiments back to them. When someone shares a problem or grief or complaint with us we often have the instinct to say I'm sorry, as in I'm sorry for the loss of your mother. What is the natural reaction when someone says sorry usually to say that's okay, but it is not okay. Don't put someone in the position of comforting you for their loss. Instead, show that you see and feel their grief. That's so awful. I can't imagine how upset you must be. This invites the other person to tell you more. Impose optimism. Things will get better. Yeah, maybe, but right now the person is upset and needs you to hear and validate that feeling. You can show you understand by saying that sounds really tough, even dude that really sucks shows empathy without trying to push them to stifle their feelings or suck it up when they're just trying to be heard. Relate to the other person. Friend, I got a fucking parking ticket. Man, you. Ugh, that's the worst. I got a parking ticket yesterday too. Man, this may be appropriate later in the conversation, but it shouldn't be your first reaction to make it about you. Stay with them. Oh no. What happened invites them to tell you more. If a complaint, be defensive or apologize immediately. Acknowledgement is important. I really fucked up. That was an error on my part. Or if you feel you didn't do anything wrong. At least I can see why you're upset with the situation. In each of these situations, you can use reflective listening to show that you hear the other person and you're with them in their feelings. You're validating their anger grief and allowing them the safety of being in it with you before moving on. I use this with kids all the time. Instead of you're okay, pet peeve. We can help kids label and understand their feelings by saying I see you're really upset right now. This gives them the vocabulary to express themselves rather than resorting to undesirable behaviors like hitting. Edit. Thank you sincerely for the golden positive feedback. 
I'm going to be teaching this next week in one of my classes, minus the F-bombs, so it was really helpful for me to practice explaining it and see that it resonated with a lot of people. Thank you. This is one of the best replies. I believe that we, as humans, try our best, but end up using the common sense methods which, as you noted, are about as useful as a peach in a gunfight. Any other tips that you could share? Improving emotional IQ is one of those soft skills that isn't talked about as much as it should. I'm so glad you liked it so much. Reflective listening changed my life. Here's something else I love that is along the same lines. Validation and hope versus toxic positivity. Not my writing or my Tumblr. <laughs> Mirroring people. Not just in their body movements but also in their time language. I only do this if I'm trying to connect with someone, and it seems to work really well. Sometimes on the tube when standing without holding anything on a stable part of the track I will pretend to randomly wobble and almost grab onto something. Pretty quickly I will see other people grab onto something if regardless if they are standing or sitting. I get bored when commuting. Clearly they know this trick and are trying to make you feel comfortable. People tend to mirror each other, and you can use that to your advantage. I used to dispatch ambulances. I'd get a lot of scared callers, running on adrenaline, who would either lose focus or become belligerent. So, if someone was screaming because a patient was having a seizure and still hadn't woken up, I'd lower the volume of my voice a bit. I'd say, we can help them while the ambulance is driving over. Please move any dangerous objects away from them and make sure the door is unlocked. And if someone was heaping on the verbal abuse because the ambulance still wasn't there, I'd speak very calmly and not match their volume or level of intensity. I'd say, they're driving over right now. You should be able to hear the siren soon. As soon as they walk in, they'll need room to park the stretcher and set their equipment down. Not only would these things make them visualize paramedics showing up, they would lower their own voices a bit to match mine. Former dispatcher can confirm this works. I did this and now we keep reacting to stuff in perfect sync. Got a similar trick? Share it in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe to the channel as videos are posted daily and there will be a channel giveaway at 500 subscribers. It's free to enter. All you have to do is subscribe.